Hi guys, this is Peter Cole. I'm a musician, composer, and a producer. And in case you missed my previous video, which was the first video for my new YouTube channel and my new music blog, uh, my family and I are moving. We're moving into a new house. It's out in the country, um, not too far out in the country, but um, considering we've always lived in the city, this is kind of a big deal for us. We're moving out of the hustle and bustle to get into a little bit more of a quiet area, which I'm super excited about. Um, and also what's exciting is this new house we're moving into has a really nice room that's going to be perfect for setting up my new home recording studio. So I wanted to take you guys on that journey of building this studio from scratch. Of course, you know, the room's already built, but we'll be walking through how I will be laying it out in terms of placing the different um, gear and speakers as well as uh, acoustic treatment in the room, um, kind of give you some uh, insight into my thinking about why I'm placing it this way, you know, what I've learned um, works and, the, and also kind of talking about in, a, in future videos, um, the building of the actual acoustic panels, which I'm going to be doing for the first time. Uh, and that's going to be exciting. So to kick things off, I created this diagram in Adobe Illustrator. I tried to make it to scale, but um, I couldn't quite get it perfect by, and it's you know still quite rough, but you can get a rough idea at least of the um, dimensions of the room, right? So if we go down to the bottom here, um, you can see that it's 13 feet wide. And if you go from, from this wall all the way to the entrance and you add up the six feet here and the 10.5 feet there, it's roughly, you know, um, 17 feet altogether. But of course, you know, the, the, the main, the main area is right here and that's about 16.5 feet. So 13 feet wide by 16.5 feet long, which, um, you know, it's not enormous, but it's, it's bigger than what I have now. My current studio space is like barely 10 by 10. It's like, and it's a perfect square, which if you know anything about acoustics, that's like the worst possible room you can have. A perfect square is the worst because the, um, essentially you have this like, ping-ponging tennis ball type thing where the sound is just bouncing perfectly back and forth amongst these four uh, perfectly squared walls. So having a nice long rectangle helps um, and I'm going to be doing some other um, acoustic treatment to improve that even more. Um, but in terms of how I'm approaching the layout where I'm going to be positioning my desk and my speakers and, and that, let's Let's talk a little bit about that because that's the first step, at least for me, when I walk into a new space. Um, and what I try to do is I try to place the speakers. First of all, I try to place them away from the wall as much as I can without, you know, eating up too much of the, the space of the room. So I don't know if this will be the final placement of the speakers, but you can see I've got a, probably what amounts to about two feet between the, the speakers and the, the wall here. Uh, I'm going to be playing around with that and I'm actually going to be doing a separate video in the future and this is probably not going to be for several weeks because we have a lot of actual construction and, and other work we have to get done and then we got to move the, the, the equipment in but once we're ready for that I'll do a video on the speaker placement itself um, but the the idea is you want to try to get it away from the wall because you, you know you don't want the the sound of the speaker if it's too close to the wall it's going to be it's going to be hitting that wall and you're going to get a lot of nasty reflections there and bass build up. So we, we try to move the speakers away from the wall, first of all. And then um, I try to get it so that the speakers are going to be, um, if you look at this room, I'm going to call this like the long direction, right? The length. You want the speakers to be placed against that long wall as, a po as opposed to placing them um, against the wall that's 10.5 feet, for example. So... That's the, that's the main gist of that, and that's a pretty um, established concept in, in when you're laying out a new studio. You want to have those speakers um, away from the wall as much as you can, and then you want to have them pointed towards the longest length wall, if, if that makes any sense. I, I, it, I'm, not, I'm not describing it probably as best as I could, but if, if, you, if you look at the diagram, that's what I'm doing here. Then I have my main... Um, uh, desk area where I will be um, placing a new desk. I'm looking into some desks. I'm either going to build my own or I will be purchasing a new desk and we'll be talking about that. Um, and that's where I'll place my keyboard. I have an 88 key keyboard and I'll put my computer monitors 
um, and some rack mounted gear potentially in that area there. And then I already have this other um, desk. It's part of a L shaped desk and I'm basically gonna um, remove one of the uh, wings of the L, if that's the right terminology, and just use um, kind of this section right here. And um, I like this because I, I like to have a separate desk area for, a, first of all, for a separate computer. Um, I do a lot of computer programming as well, and I like to keep that kind of separate. Um, plus, I have this window here, you see, uh, which looks out, um, has a nice view. So uh, I'll have a separate um, uh, computer set up here, and I'll also put some hard drives um, um, and other kind of just general workspace. Sometimes I just like to sketch stuff on, on paper, so it's nice to have a nice bit of room there. So that's the main control room. This is the main area that I'll be working in. Um, and then as you as you dig deeper back into the room, um, I'm calling this the lounge slash live area because it's kind of going to be where I'll put a sofa and uh, be able to kick back. I'll probably have some storage. Um, but I'm also going to try to keep some space open in case I want to record um, live instruments. So I, you know, I won't be putting a full drum set here ever, but maybe some small percussion, um, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, um, violin, uh, potentially. It's nice to have this extra open area here. Um, and then going a little bit further back, um, the entrance here, this is actually the entrance. Um, uh, when you go out this door, this is to the rest of the main house. Um, what's great about this room is it doesn't have any rooms to the left, right, or above it. Um, the only the only way it's connected to the house is this one wall here, and this leads into the main house. Uh, so I'll be talking in the future about how I'll be um, trying to soundproof this door as much as possible, because uh, this is the main um, sort of place where sound will leak out into the main part of the house. And then there's a bathroom. There's actually a this this space has its own bathroom. And this diagram makes it look very long and narrow. That, that, that's not really how it looks. It's, it's quite a bit more um, wide than this. Um, there's a shower in there. There's a bathtub in there, for God's sake. There's a bathtub, uh, a toilet, and a sink. It's, it's not super big. But I thought it might be cool to use that as some sort of an isolation booth at some point. Since it is attached to the studio, I could potentially put an amp in there or some uh, singers in there. So I haven't got that all figured out, and that's probably going to be the last thing I do. Um, so, so decisions in around how I'll be approaching that um, will not come for quite a while. I'm going to be focusing on the rest of the space. So that's a quick overview of the space that I'm working with. The next thing I want to talk about is how I'm going to be approaching the um, acoustic treatment. So um, right now the room is just uh, a bunch of bare walls um, and by the way there's just quite a few windows if you can see from the diagram um, which are not ideal but um, I don't want to cover them up too much either because I love looking out the window so I'm gonna um, be working on how to approach the, the the window coverings and and how that's gonna impact the, the the sound of the room but what I what I will start with is the um, the corners of the room so um, the corners of the room, if, if, if you don't know, um, can be bad for bass because you can get a lot of bass build up there because um, you have the, you know, these two corners coming together and the, the bass collects there and, and jumbles around and, and amplifies. And so when you're listening to it within the room, it can, it can make the, the sound a bit muddy. Um, so the first thing you want to do is look at the corners of the room and uh, and and put in some absorption there that's going to suck up some of those low frequencies um, i have some bass traps that i bought years and years and years ago and uh, they're okay um i don't i don't have a lot of them um, certainly not enough to cover um, all four corners here but i will also be um, building some of my own bass traps um and 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 the the acoustic panels that I'll be building, I'm actually, actually going to be doing that this weekend and I'm going to be recording that and I'll have a video in the future of how I built them. I'm going to be using um, some rock wool insulation and I'm going to be building a frame and I'm going to be constructing um, some acoustic panels to absorb more of that um, low end and, and the mid, mid, mid to high um, for some of the um, panels that I build as well. So the acoustic 
panels that I build will be a combination of the base traps, um, which I will put in the corners, and then I will hang um, additional panels on the sides here. So you can see these gray uh, rectangles here. That's my idea of uh, indicating where I'll be placing sound panels. Um, this isn't final. When, when they're actually built and we have the room space, similar to how I'll be approaching the speaker placement, I'll uh, get a lot more scientific there and I'll do a whole separate video where I'm walking through how I'm placing them, why I'm placing them there. Uh, but in the general sense, this is what I'm thinking. Um, you know, a base trap for each corner and then some additional um, panels towards the, toward, notice how they're towards the front where the speakers are, because you know, that's where the sound is and that's where you want to place more of your absorption where that initial sound is coming out. Um, now, you don't want to place them all over the, the room. Um, you know, I see a lot of, and I used to do this when I was, when I was first starting out, I would place, you know, foam everywhere, uh, you know, those foam panels. Um, uh, and th the problem with that is that eventually completely deadens the room and you have this room that doesn't really sound that natural. So I'm purposely le leaving spaces uh, where um, there will be no absorption, no foam, no panels, um, so that we have more of a live area. And in fact, that's what I'm trying to do for this whole back area here. I don't know if that's going to work. I might be putting an acoustic panel along this wall if I find I need to do that. Um, I'm also going to be putting a di diffuser, diffuser, um, and it's this weird looking shape here. If you haven't seen a diffuser before, um, and we'll, we'll talk about this more when we actually put it up, but a diffuser is usually placed at the back wall, um, the furthest from the speakers, um, and that helps break up the sound as it's, as it's hitting that wall. Instead of just hitting um, a flat wall and then bouncing immediately back, a diffuser helps break up that so that it has more of a, a natural response. So you usually place them in the back of the, the, the room for that. So I'll be placing one there. Um, as well, the sofa here will act as an additional uh, base absorber. It, the sofa that I'm gonna be putting there is a big, heavy, thick um, sofa, and it's gonna be perfect for that, um, in addition to uh, giving me a place to rest and take a break when I need to. Um, so that's what I'm thinking about in terms of acoustic treatment. What I haven't figured out is um, how I'm gonna approach the windows um, I might get some curtains and, and cover them up when I need to. Otherwise, I plan to um, leave them open or, or I should say uncovered as much as possible because I love the windows. I love having natural light. Um, the, the view I have, particularly out this window here, is really nice. There's a, there's a forest um, area in, in my backyard and it's, it's really beautiful. So I want to try to keep that open as much as possible. But we'll see... Um, as things progress, if I need to cover them up, um, I will do so. Um, also, what I haven't fully figured out is the ceiling. Uh, I might um, use some of the acoustic panels that I build for the walls. I might um, make similar ones and hang them from the ceiling. Again, there's no, no room above me, which is great, so I don't have to worry too much about uh, soundproofing that ceiling, but um, I might wanna help absorb some of the some of the mid to low frequencies by putting some some sound absorbers up there um, and also one thing that I forgot to mention is currently the entire space is covered in carpet um, and so I'm going to be taking out that carpet and putting in a hardwood floor and then probably a very thin um, uh, rug around the control room area um, and the reason for that is again I, I the, the carpet is is you know uh, potentially too um, absor absorptive. Man, I cannot say that word. Um, you want to have a little bit of, uh, of live space, so the, the hardwood floor will help um, create, a, create a little bit more of a live room in there. As well, it's kind of easier to, to, to move around on your um, chair when you have rollers on your chair. Uh, I always find um, a big, thick rug difficult to move my chair around. So it's... Um, that's something that's coming. Obviously, that's a big job. I got to pull out the carpet and then have someone install a hardwood floor. So that's going to be coming in the next couple of weeks. Um, but I will be working on that. Um, and then the other thing, the last thing I want to talk about, uh, which I'll probably be working on next week, is is the soundproofing of the front door. So um, 
as I mentioned a minute ago, this front door here is the only connection to the main house for this space. Um, so I'm going to be working to, to soundproof this door, this kind of whole area here as much as I can, because um, that'll help isolate my, my um, entire room from the rest of the house. So one thing I'll be doing is, um, you know, I'm not going to go too hardcore, uh, but I will be weather stripping this, this door area here. That'll help lock in some of the sound. I'm going to be putting one of those, uh, I think it's called a door sweep. Um, that's at the, the, the bottom of the door um, to, to lock in the sound. And then uh, I'm also going to look into um, some heavy, either heavy blankets or um, that, uh, I think it's like heavy mass vinyl um, material. Uh, that might be getting a little too crazy, but I'm going I'm to start with the, the weather stripping and the door sweep um, and potentially some blankets, and I'll see how, how that goes first. Um, hopefully that, that'll do, um, that'll cut down on the noise um, bleeding out to the rest of the house so I don't wake up my uh, seven-year-old daughter when she's asleep at night. Um, that's th the main goal because I don't really have any, any neighbors too close by, uh, which is great. Um, so that's the main, the main gist of it, guys. Um, it's going to be super exciting. Um, I'm going to be filming as much as I can all the different um, construction I'm doing. Uh, the building of the panels, the weather stripping of the door that I just talked about, uh, when I, if and when I build a desk, I, I, or if I purchase a desk for my main um, area, area where the keyboard and stuff will go, I'll be filming that, um, or and walking you through how I set that up, and definitely talking about the speaker placement um, and and where I end up finally placing the speakers because that's such a key component of the layout. So I'm super excited. Uh, thank you so much for um, listening to me go through all this. I hope hope some of it was interesting. Um, it'll definitely get a lot more interesting as we get um, stuff built out um, and we actually start, you know, building some panels, moving some gear in there, um, placing the speakers, hearing some music come out of those speakers. Um, it's going to be, you know, several weeks, if not months, of work. But um, hopefully, you're um, going to learn something from uh, going along this journey with me. All right, guys, happy new year and talk to you soon.